word. I want to continue from where I stopped last week uh, on Sunday and uh, when I started talking about having a long haul mindset. And we just said I wanted to share some learnings about the long haul mindset. The first learning I said was this, that rest and break ta- breaks are times of refreshing, times of recharge and deliberate times of rejuvenation. In Psalm 127 verse 2, scripture says it is useless for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night anxiously working for food to eat for God gives rest to his loved ones so if we find ourselves chasing things for which we're not able to attain or we're just pursuing them consistently and we're getting tired and we don't have rest that is not a long haul mindset there is no one who wants to run a marathon who scores halfway and stops and pants they take the right pace as they keep going on so they can get to the end the bible says when you run a race run as though first corinthians chapter 9 i believe from verse 22 to 24 it says run as one who wants to win not one who's just beaten not fighting as one who's beating the air where are you going if you want to win what is necessary for your win whether you want to start a business whether you want to grow in your career whether you want to become you want to become the next ceo of your company that's okay it's a great dream but when you have to overwork yourself at the mercy of somebody to make a decision then you need to rethink that amen God wants to give you rest amen I have never found an employee that would say or employer that would say whoa you're working too hard if you find one let me know it's a good employer to work for because they never come and say you're working too hard okay so you are the one who sets the pace the second thing we talked about is that when you're developing a mind to go far you need to develop a mind to rest as well uh, you need to de- de- uh, uh, sorry de- de- develop a mind to rest as well and then the third one we talked about is that if you're doing a purposeful work and creating value Take a moment to see what you have done, appreciate it, and just thank God for the strength to do it. The Bible says that you should acknowledge and you should honor the Lord your God for this. He's the one that gives you the power to get wealth. Ladies and gentlemen, have you ever been struck with a headache? You know, let me give you something so funny. And, and, and if anyone's not felt this, that's okay. You know, so during this, everyone has gone through a time when you have a cough, you have a cold, you have um, sneezing, um, you just feel weird, body aches, it's okay. Ever since this corona thing came around, the moment you cough differently, even your family member will say, are you okay? There is no longer a regular cough in this world anymore. Because for some reason, if you cough now, it's a, I remember one day I went to the, um, to the uh, hospital, uh, and I was, was, a, was a, I think it was, it wasn't a hospital, it was a, I can't remember, it was something healthcare, um, hospital I think, uh, for my physical therapy or something like that and then during this period and then I'm standing right there and they've checked me and said everything I asked me all the questions I have you had cough and that's I said no and I answered everything and right before he gave me the um the uh <laughs> the bracelet I did <coughs> <laughs> and I could look at first I was on the defensive I was about to say see that one was because uh was irritated so everyone is afraid now even have you, I don't know about you but I've heard it so many times that the moment you have one of the symptoms you are thinking have I already mm, how many of them have I let me go check temperature let me go very far because every cough now is like is that it like as if you're expecting it okay and that's not what God wants to give you God wants to give you rest he wants to give you rest he doesn't want you to be worried about what you're going to be doing in your life so the power to wake up in the morning go to work come back from work and enjoy the work of your labor it is God's grace and if you don't understand this listen wait till you're one of those people you will never be one of those people but if you ever find yourself in a place where you are needing his touch then you would know when to turn over to him but you see, we don't have to wait till that time. We don't have to wait till the vehicle breaks down before we service it. You don't have to wait till you're walked all day long and you have nothing to show for it. Take a moment, look back. Appreciate what you have done. Appreciate the blessings of God. If, 
if you earn a hundred dollars, look back at it and say, Lord, this is the work of my labor. I thank you for a hundred dollars. It's not where you want to go, but it's where you are today. And if you can thank him for the hundred dollars you earned today, he would empower you for more. Why? Because anyone who gives thanks would always receive multiplication of what they desire. And the truth about it is that when we learn to give thanks in the little things, if you, if you, how many people get home and get your salary at the end of a month? And, and rather than, than, than curse out your boss or your, 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 your employer for not paying too much, for look at, look at what they give me, rather, I mean, would you take it and say, Lord, I thank you. Because this may not be where I'm going, but I think because where I am today. To be able to enjoy the blessings of God, it's, it's, to be able to enjoy the fruit of a labor, it's blessed. It's rest in itself. Many people go to work and cannot, do not have enough time to eat what they're working for. Not enough time to eat what they're working for. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter two, chapter five, chapter five, verse um, actually chapter five, verse eighteen, it says, "Even so, I have noticed that one thing, at least, that is good. It is good for people to eat, drink, and enjoy their work under the sun during the short life God has given them, and to accept their lot in life. It is a good thing to receive wealth from God and good health to enjoy it. You will receive wealth." Wealth is not, that's why I used to tell people, wealth is not just wealth alone. Wealth without good health is, is a burden. It has been labored for somebody else to work, to eat. You will not labor for another to eat. You will receive good wealth. You will receive wealth from God and good health in Jesus' name. But you need to learn to rest. We all need to learn to rest. The other day, for the first time in a long time, our first time in a long time, my eyes shut at 10 o'clock. Oh my goodness. I went to bed. 10 o'clock I slept. Man. But you see, when the body has been conditioned, <laughs> you enjoy the beginning. And then at 3, my eyes was like this. At 4, my eyes were coming open. And I said, Lord, I need rest. I just stayed in bed. This one, I will rock it to the end. Amen. He gives his beloved sweet sleep. Many years ago, I used to feel guilty about, about sleeping when the work hasn't been done. I would work till 3 or 4 in the morning and wake up early to be the first at work again. Until one day, someone asked me and said, you know, how's it? I said, you know, my father, he said, you know, how's, I can't remember what the slogan, the question was. I said, my father has not bought the company yet. When my father buys a company, then they would have my work, my own 24 hours. Right now, I belong to many other people, my family. I need to go back to them. And so I'm not, I'm not going to feel guilty about working. Do the work while it's still day. For the night comes when no man shall work. John chapter 9, verse 4. God says you should do the work while it's day. So when it's time to work, work. When it's time to sleep, sleep. Take rest. Somebody say amen. Rest. Watch this. This is another one. Write it down. Rest is obedience to, li obedience to living on earth. Oh, sorry. Rest is obedience to living heaven on earth. And, and uh, this is amazing. This blew my mind away. Rest is obedience to living heaven on earth. How do I know this? I mean, I've said it over and over in Scripture. It says there's a rest that's prepared for us, and it's here. The rest was created in heaven, and God told us over and over again in Hebrews chapter 4, um, verse 3, um, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9, that rest has been given unto us so that we can enjoy, we can, we can, we can cease from our labor and enjoy blessings. I just read Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 18 to 20, that you work hard and you rest. It is God's gift. I read the fact that the Bible says he gives his beloved sweet sleep. Rest is living heaven on earth. It says, for we who have believed do enter that rest as he has sworn. So I swore in my, as he said, so I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the earth, from the world. Where was the works finished? In heaven. So if you enter the rest, you enter the rest that heaven has prepared for us. 
You enter the rest that heaven has prepared for us. That rest, that's what the Bible calls it, that the peace that passes understanding. That rest is not the rest that says everything is fine. It's a rest that says in the middle of the storm, there is calmness on my boat. The rest is not related, it's not relative to the world. There may be commotion in the world, but in your boat, there must be peace. Because when it said peace be still, it was talking to the storm. Peace be still. Why? Because Jesus needed to go. He needed to rest. Do you understand that the storms did not disrupt Jesus' sleeping while on the boat? People did that. The storm did not wake Jesus up. It did not disturb people, like Jesus. It was people for lack of faith. And that same rest and peace that Jesus had, Jesus has, has given that same to us. So that no matter what's happening, there's some people you should just kick away from your life because they're the one that will disrupt your peace in God. When they come to you and say, have you heard? Do you know? Hey, I don't know. Maybe just in case... Just tell them to go and face the wall. If they say to the wall, the wall will bounce it back and they will hear what they're saying. But you are not part of that. When they say there's a casting down, the Bible says you will say what? There's a lifting up. And that is God's word for you. Where people say there's a casting down, you will say concerning me, there's a lifting up. Listen to this. If you do not say it, you lose. Listen, if you do not say it, you're the one losing on what God's promises has already said. So do say it. Hallelujah. So rest is living heaven on earth. When God gave us rest, he said, I want you to come back to the garden of heaven. Remember when I said, when Jesus, when God said, it is finished. He created everything and said, it is finished. Then he put man in it and said, everything's done. Then he looked at it. The Bible says, remember, the Bible says, he looked at all that he had created and saw that it was good. That is the rest I was talking about earlier. Just looking at what God has done through you and said, God, it was good. He looked at what he said, it was good. And so everything was okay. And man began to live in that rest. Until sin came, the devil came and threw us out of that rest. So rest that God wants to give you is living like what Adam was living before sin came around. Was living heaven on earth. It may not look so. It may not look like that. It may look like you're, you're challenged and you're facing trouble and turmoil. But listen to this. God is able to give you rest in the middle of the storm. What you're facing, the reason it has not taken you away is because of God. So please give him some credit. Let's not look at the things that have built, that, that has derailed us but let's look at the God that has not allowed us to be consumed by those things that derailed us John chapter 16 33 says you will face trials and tribulation in this world it says but be of good cheer I have overcome this world and I, you know in that scripture says these things I have spoken to you that in you may have peace not in the world not in things around you in me that if you put your rest in God you would have peace in the world you will have tribulations but be of good cheer even that world I have overcome it which means you can live in that world and still be peaceful hallelujah now let me say this when you choose not to have rest you are giving in to disobedience if, if rest, obeying God's rest, is, is living heaven on earth, then when you don't give in to rest, is this, this blew my mind away and changed my life forevermore. Uh, uh, disobedience. I want us to read Hebrews, uh, Revelation chapter 14, verse 11. Revelation chapter, chapter, Revelation chapter 14, verse 11. <laughs> you know, this is very important. I want us to read it together. Uh, let me see if that's what, okay, I want us to read together. One, two, go, those of us at home. And the smoke. You know, let's, let's stop there. Let's start from verse 10. Verse 9, that way we can get the full picture. One, two, go. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark, 
on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And what does it say in verse 11? And the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and whoever receives the mark of his name. Now let me say, understand this. Heaven has rest. Hell has no rest. What you practice on earth here reflects where you want to go. When you choose not to have rest, let me, let me take that back. Let me say it this way. What you practice, what you, be careful what you, what you do on earth. Because on earth, yeah, because wherever, wherever you want, where, the only place in, in, in life or after this earth that has no rest is hell. You will not be there. You will not be there. Because you'll be in heaven. And when I say heaven on earth, it means you're receiving God's blessings and God's peace on earth. But what if you choose not to rest? You are giving in to disobedience. And the only place after you, you leave, I mean, you, can, you cannot continue like that. The only place where there's no rest is in the place you don't want to go. So attach, enjoy, benefit, understand God's place when it comes to rest. Somebody amen, say amen. So we ought to learn to carve out your rest. You remember I said in, 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 um, on Sunday, I said sometimes, you know, Ecclesiastes, so Exodus chapter 34, verse 21, 34 verse 21, Jesus said, uh, the, the Bible said, God was telling um, them and, and said that they should work six days, right? Six days you shall work, but on the seventh day, what should you do? You shall rest. In plowing time and harvest time, you shall rest. Here's what God's command says. So, again, if you do not rest, you're living in disobedience. There's no, I got to do better than everybody. That's okay. Do it within the time. But learn to take rest. Why? Because if your body is going to take you to your destination, it needs to be well serviced. And rest is a service. I was is a service you do. It's servicing your body. I was listening to somebody, and he, he started to get me thinking about longer hours of sleep. And he said, the body naturally heals itself when you sleep. Naturally heals itself when it sleeps. And it was saying something, they said, listen, like if you, if you, it was very powerful. It was saying something like if you eat a lot, like I was saying the other day, if you chew so much, much meat, you don't, mm -mm, and you swallow it. When you now go to bed, what you're supposed to have finished chewing and let your body just process and go through. When you go to bed, your body will be working on the food you ate when it's supposed to be resting. What day or what time does it get to rest? You wake up the next morning, eat another food. It has not finished taking off the first one and eat it. And it talks about, I mean, I was really blessed by so many things. It said, it was talking about how the body just begin to, there's a certain number of time or a time limit the body needs to begin to start to, re, re, to, to, to heal itself. You know, here's one thing I would say. Do you understand that many times headaches and pains and some things we may be going through can just go away if we just rest? If we just rest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So six days you should work. And I told you this, you know, many years ago, I... Um, um, I told you my story about not wanting to work on Sunday. I made it clear to my employer, I didn't want to work on Sunday. Um, you have to be willing to carve out your own rest. You have to be willing to determine what rest looks like for you. So if someone, and someone says, but pastor, you don't understand, man shall eat. And I don't disagree. But if I was going to quote the scripture, it says man shall not eat by bread alone. But also every, every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So man shall eat, but here's a word of God that's proceeding. That there's a word of God that's coming out today. Challenge God for more. 
If you say, Lord God, I'm earning this much and it's making me not come to church, then tell God, I want to earn $3 more an hour. I want to earn $50 more an hour. You see, it's as big as you can imagine it. God is able to make it happen. If your mind is not ready for it, if you don't challenge God, don't ask God, say, God, here's my limitation here. If you would do this for me, you would find me in church every day. Many years ago, I, I was looking for my first job, and I, I told God, I said, Lord, if you would, I'm going to be in church every single day. Now, if you would do this, and I pray, this me, I did my own before, the, the stuff goes. I'm going to, you're going to find me in the kingdom, in the house of Lord. When they say, who there, I'll be there, right? I, I'll be there. And I said that, and I said, Lord, that when I have to do what pertains to me, you have to show up too. And he has been showing up, and has never stopped showing up. If you will stand up and challenge God for that next. I look for people who will stand up and give a testimony here about the mighty miracle God did in life because they challenged God for rest. If God said rest is his promise to you and the world is depriving you of that rest, challenge God and say, Lord God, I want to rest and I'm asking you that give me that job that I will no longer have to do this. Now, don't get that job and pick a second one on your rest day. That's not the point. Give God, give unto God what's God. Give unto Caesar what's Caesar. We good? So seek a higher paying job, not, a long, not longer working hours. Seek a higher paying job, not longer working hours. Why is rest important? Uh, because your health is at the center of your life. So why is rest important? Your work is at the center of your life. A bad health will breed a frustrated life. Bad health will affect every area of your life. Every part of your life depends on good health to thrive and function properly. So we need to build a healthy life. We need to build a healthy life. Somebody say amen. Now, with a long-haul mindset, with a long-haul mindset, um, there are three aspects. We, you, you, we have to build on three aspects of rest. Or let me say there are three aspects to rest. Having a long-haul mindset, there are three aspects to rest. Or three dimensions, or three um, layers, or three um, levels, or three different places when it comes to rest. And these as aspects reflect on being, on us being a tripartite being, which means we're made of, we're, we're a spirit man. We are, we, we have a body and we possess a soul, right? And so the three aspects of rest is the spiritual aspect, the emotional slash mental aspect, emotional slash mental aspect, and the physical aspect. Say after me, spiritual, emotional, and mental physical for you to be uh, to be taught for you to enjoy total well-being you have to have rest in these three aspects how do i know this third john chapter two the scripture says i wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers God is talking about total, holistic, we talked about earlier, I talked about that on Sunday, holistic rest. Don't just rest because you've made so much money, you rest. Rest because you have good health. Rest because, rest, look forward to the rest that comes from good health, from a peaceful mind. Not a mind that races at night. Somebody say amen. And so when it comes to the first one, to, which is what? The spiritual rest. Let's open our Bibles to Isaiah chapter 26. Isaiah chapter 26. We're going to talk about the spiritual rest. Isaiah chapter 26. Verse 3. The scripture says, You will keep him in perfect peace, whose peace, whose mind is stayed on you, because he trusts in you. In Hebrews chapter 3, verse 16 to 19, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 16 to 19, I'm impressed. Chapter, chapter 3, verse 16 to 19, the scripture says that for 
who having heard rebelled indeed was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses right now with whom was he angry 40 years talking about God was he not with those who sinned whose corpses fell in the wilderness those who did not enter verse 18 and to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest but those who did not what obey right and so we and so we that we could so we that so we so we see that could not glory to god i really graduated school so we see that they could not enter because of unbelief then i want us to go to for verse 4. Therefore, since a promise remains, let me have that in New Living, in Amplified Version. I want to give you a better understanding of that. Therefore, while the promise of entering is rest still remains and is freely offered today, let us fear. In this case, let us reverence, let us go after it, in case any of you may seem to have come short of reaching of it, reaching it, or think he has come too late. Now, let me tell you what the scripture is saying. Haven't told us who missed the mark and did not get there. There is still that promise God wants people to get into the rest. And then the Bible says in verse in chapter 4, it says, verse 1 says that as we know that there still remains a promise to get into the rest. We should not be afraid to say we are qualified. He says, let us reverence, let us fear, let us believe, let us walk towards it, that we may also still what? Enter into what? That rest. You have not come too late into God's rest. So therefore, we have to learn to rest in God. And resting in God is through obedience and belief. Because they did not enter it because they did not obey. But if you and I would obey, would enter into rest. God will give you his rest in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, the scripture says, go with me to the book of Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. And we've read that over and over again. But I want to tell you the spiritual aspect of, of, of his rest, right? Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 says, Come to me all you that are weary and heavily burdened by religious rituals that provide no peace. And I will give you rest, refreshing for your souls with salvation. And let me have in uh, New King James Version, please. Verse 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart. In heart. You will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So here's the scripture saying that. See, he said, listen. For the spiritual part, come to me and I will give you rest. It says, come, I'll give you rest. It says, come to me, all you the heaven laden, and I will give you rest. It says, I will listen to me, I will teach you. Um, Matthew chapter 11, let me go verse 29. It says, 29, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I'm gentle and lowly in heart and you would find rest for your souls. And let me go again. Go back there again. I want to read that again carefully. It says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I'm gentle and lowly in heart. You will find and you will find rest for your souls. And verse 30 says that, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So I, I want to give you, submit a couple of things here to you on that scripture. It says, come to me, all ye that heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. and For my burden is, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. It says, and there will be rest for your souls. Now, how do we obtain God's rest? How do we obtain God's rest when it comes to the spiritual things? Spiritually, how do we obtain God's rest? Number one, we have to come. We have to come. 
to him. It says, come all you who are heavy laden. The Bible says, no one who comes to me should I, will I by any means turn away. We have to come. So no matter what we are going through, we have to know that there's no other one that can do it but for God. We no, don't need to run to the, 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 the people that we trust. The Bible says anyone who puts their trust in man will be put to shame. But if you put your trust in God, you will not be put to shame. Not run unto man, but run to God. He's the one that can never lie. He's the one that has said it and will he not do it. It. So the first thing we have to do is learn to come unto God. You have to first recognize that you have a heavy burden. Come unto God. We, my family and I watched the Pilgrim's Progress. And, and in the Pilgrim's Progress, he started, you can see him. I don't know if you've watched him. He was carrying the heavy burden on his back, on his back, until he came to the cross. And he laid it all down at the cross. Because at the cross, Jesus said, it is finished. Why carry a heavy burden? And so when he came to the cross, he laid it all down. I don't know what it is that the devil has used or the devil is thinking or you're facing in your life. You may think that God has forgotten and neglected, neglected you. You may feel like you're all alone. But people of God, let me tell you this. Bring your burdens to the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, come to me, not to anybody else. Come to me if you're heavily laden. And here's one thing. He did not say maybe. He did not say I will think about it. He says, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. So it's one thing for us to come to God. Now how do we come to God? In this Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 and 7 clearly lets us know there. It says that in Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. It says that be anxious for nothing. But in all things, in other words, do not be stressed out. Do not worry. When you come into him means don't be worried, don't be stressed out. In all things, through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And verse 7 says, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. In other words, I, I reckon that scripture in, in Matthew chapter 11 says, come to me. But how do we come to him? If you've given your life to him, you've surrendered to him, then you're coming to him in the room of prayer. And say, Lord God, I cannot fix it myself. The other day, my wife and I, my wife was very troubled with a lot of things. It was something, I think, some, a few months ago. She was quite troubled and she was telling me, hey, look, hey, Cola, I'm very troubled with this. I'm very troubled with this. And I, you know, when you know that there's nothing we can do, nothing I can do. So I said to her, I said, there's nothing I can do being troubled. But here's one thing I can do. One thing I've learned to do and has actually helped for me is just tell God. Just put it down and say, Lord, I am tired, I'm exhausted, I'm worried. And I need your help. The Bible says, come and just lay it out before him. Just say, Lord, I'm exhausted. Lord, I don't even know what to do anymore. And I need your help. It says, be anxious for nothing. Rather than carry worry. Deacon Uche was talking about it. He said, if you, if, you, if you don't, I don't know the chart, right? If you, if, I don't know what the chart he said. But it was more of a situation that if you cannot solve a problem, why worry? If you can solve a problem, why worry? You can solve the problem, so just go solve the problem. In other words, in the reality, we may feel overwhelmed. But in the scripture and, 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 and what we need to take away as believers is there's nothing that should overwhelm us. You may not know how to pay your mortgage. Here's the thing. Do your worry does not pay the mortgage. You may not know how to eat, where to eat the food. You say, worry, it would cannot fix the food so why worry sit down and say to God Lord I cannot pay this mortgage I have worked all day long I'm $50 short and I cannot pay in your room of prayer God will speak to somebody and remember I didn't say pray for money you just said Lord I cannot pray for it but I cannot do it what do I need to do the Bible says and you shall hear a voice behind you saying this is the way, walking in. And you don't know every time you go to God in prayer, there is someone that, he's, that he has assigned to be a blessing to you, one way or the other. Or he might tell you, go ask that person for a job. He may not give you the money. He might say, go talk to that person for a new job. He might say, wake up tomorrow, polish your resume, and apply somewhere else. 
In other words, we have to learn to believe that God holds all the answers. The Bible says he's not a man that he shall lie, not the son of man that he shall repent. Have I said it and will I not do it? Have I spoken and will I not make it come to pass? His arms is not too short that he is yes, not deaf that he cannot hear you. No, his arm too short that he cannot deliver you or save you. And when we understand in our hearts that God is the only one that can, that can give us rest, then we will always learn to turn to him. Let me be honest with you. You're a body. You're in this body. We come to God when there's, when everything, when there's no longer any hope. When people come to you and say to you, there's no, that any, there's no longer any hope. And because there's no longer any hope, we cannot, um, uh, we cannot do it anymore. And so people come to you at that time and say to you, hey, um, and it, that's where you find yourself coming to, coming to God. Um, um, there's, there's nothing else we can do. When, when, when in your, um, uh, doctors or somebody comes to you and say, you know, there's nothing else we can do. Um, and that's when you begin to turn to God. But that should not be the case. We need to turn to God before we turn to the doctor. We need to turn to God, God even while we turn, turn to the doctor. When someone tells me I'm going for a procedure, I'm doing something, I'm not going to say, God, heal them from that and do, so they don't have to do the procedure. I believe God, God made me, God cost me, or God spoke to me to be an engineer. I am an engineer today. If someone come, wants to, this is not cut blanche, if someone wants to connect a wire, okay, I don't need to pray to connect a wire. I have intelligence and knowledge to connect a wire. In other words, if I see a wire that's out and can be dangerous, I, I can respond to that because of training and knowledge. What's happening inside the wire, I don't know. I only know about the knowledge I'm trained to do. When someone says to me, I'm going for procedure, I'm not saying, Lord God, don't let them go for procedure. I say, Lord, whenever you want to do the healing, you do it. Do it such a way that you alone will receive that glory. Because sometimes it may be the fact that so you go to the doctor, the doctor says, go back home and rest. I told you I was in the ER the other day. Right? I could have said, God heal me, God heal me. I did not, no. Meanwhile, I went to the doctor. The doctor said, after I paid so much money, the doctor said, go back home and drink water. Now you think if I had knowledge, I would have drunk water. And maybe I should have even sat down and prayed before I went to the doctor. And I'd have heard a voice behind me saying, drink water. But because of what you're feeling, you're probably thinking, no, 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 I need to go see a doctor. So I told God, I said, Lord, it's not because I know you cannot heal. I know you can heal right now. And I've seen many people that went there and the doctor only confirmed what God had already done. And sometimes people go there and the doctor tells them exactly what to do. And it doesn't mean the doctor heals. It's because the doctor cares and the wisdom. He's got wisdom because he learned certain things about that. But doctors are not perfect. They make mistakes. And so I begin to pray that if they're going through any procedure, that God would enable a doctor and God would give them wisdom to make the right decision. Let me give you another analogy to explain what I'm saying. Have you ever been injured before? And you have a booboo in your hand. What you do with the booboo in your hand is this. You take a band-aid and you cover the booboo on the hand. The band-aid does not glue the hand together. It does not heal the booboo. It preserves the area so infections will not get inside because the body heals itself. Doctors care. God heals. And if we're going to walk into anything in life, we have to understand that God takes ultimate. So for us to enjoy the spiritual rest, we have to know and learn to turn to God always. Turn to God always. I have, you've heard my story, I've woken up one day and I decided I wanted to go to a dentist just because I, I woke up late and I didn't want to calling late, that, well, I woke up late that day and I didn't want to, I just called him and said, you know, today I'm, I'll be going to the, the, the dentist. Today I have a lifelong um, mark for that decision. I did not check who the dentist is. I had my dentist and I just picked somebody in the, in, uh, in the system and I just picked somebody. And so I went to the dentist until today, that person drilled the tooth till I had to remove the whole tooth. 
Ja, ja. Moses said, if your presence will not go with me, I don't want to leave this place. It would be foolish for the people of Israel to think I won all the battles. When God said, I will win it on the way. But they still had to fight. God didn't say, go ahead and just clear all of them for him, for them. They still had to fight. So just because you're doing things does not mean God is not in the middle of what you're doing. We need to always trust God. In, the Bible says, it says we, should, we should seek him, the kingdom of God first in all things. So no matter what you're going through, my question to you is, have you asked God? Have you talked to God? Is God in your boat? Are you seeking after God? Are you enjoying his presence? Don't wait till the troubles come along. Start today. Start right now. Build your spiritual rest. Have moments where you sit down and commune with God. Because then you would hear him more clearly. Somebody say amen. You know, the rest I'm talking about is the rest that is not, is a rest in God. It's a rest that's not afraid of death threats. It's a rest that's not afraid of, of, of losses. It's a rest that's not afraid of things that may happen around you. It's a rest that happens when Paul was, 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 was in this world and they said they would stone Paul. He still had, he still had rest. It's a rest that happened with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It's a rest that happened. They said, even if, even if he does not show up, I will not bow down to a graven image. It's a rest. That makes you be planted in God for the purpose for which he has called you. Somebody say amen. It's a rest that does not make you afraid of other people. It's a rest that puts on you a certain supernatural power. It's a rest that speaks about where you're seated. It's not a rest that talks about from the below. The Bible says you're seated in high places in Christ Jesus. When you know who is right with you in high places, there's a certain kind of rest that comes from that. There's a certain kind of rest. Who you are in Christ Jesus births the rest that you enjoy as a spiritual being. Somebody say amen. You know, during the riot and pandemic when there was protest and there was protest around the White House. I, I, I don't know the story whether, you know, the, the Secret Service wanted to take the president out to a place that was safe. But the two versions of the story. Um, anyway, they went to, he went to check a safe place. And, and so... So that he could be behind a safe place. When things are around you, God is always looking out for you. If you can learn to trust him. Why was President Trump safe there? Because he was in the most protected place in the world. The most protected house in the world. See, so you're seated in heavenly places with your father. You should have rest you should experience and expect rest nothing can come to derail you if you sit it with him have that boldness walk out with that boldness step out in that faith understand that i am of god and nothing shall by any means hurt me because he loves me too much and if you're able to do that you begin to enjoy god's rest in your life somebody say amen Hallelujah. Amen. Let me have 2 Corinthians chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I'm going to say something about this rest. This rest is one that requires you to think like a believer. It requires a common thinking. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I'm going to read verse 9. And I'm going to verse 9, then I move on. It says, but it's written, the eyes have not seen, the ears have not heard, and as he entered the hearts of man, what God has prepared for those who love him. And then in verse 10, the scripture says, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, the deep things of God. Let me have verse 13 or 14. These things we also speak, not in words, which man's wisdom, what? Teaches. But which the 
Holy Spirit teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Verse 14, but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God for their foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Verse 15 says, but he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly, rightly judged by no one. In other words, what Scripture is telling us here is this, that if you're going to enjoy the spiritual things, you've got to think spiritual. You've got to be spiritual. So if you want to enjoy God's rest, you cannot look at it through the normal eyes. God can tell you to go walk through a place that does not look restful. If He tells you to do that, you have to do that. Because it is a spiritual rest, not a, not a natural rest. When God tells you to take a step, when people think they're not taking a step. When God speaks to you and says, you know what? Take that bold step. Invest in that thing. When you're hearing God to, about what you need to do next, that is a spiritual rest and that's God leading you. It may not make sense. The Bible says He uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. It may not make sense. But one thing is certain. If God is giving you rest, you will be blessed by it. I was watching something that was put on a WhatsApp thing. A man of God was preaching in Lebanon and in the middle of a, of, of, of a service and they were praying, they praying and he was having this nudge in the spirit and they were praying hard and they were having a nudge in the spirit and all of a sudden he just stopped. They thought, they said they thought it was a madman. It was a pastor. They said they thought it was, he, he was very angry. He said he didn't have this peace in his mind and he told them, he said, everyone go home. They said, why? We're cooking for the, for the homeless. He said, no, no, put it in the fridge. Go home. Everyone just go home. Leave this place right now. I want you to leave this place right now. And it was the wondering, how can you stop the, the service in the middle of a service and tell people to go home? You know, he was very adamant, of it, adamant of, of, about it. And people left and went home. Not no sooner, a few hours after or sometime after they left, when the explosion happened in Lebanon. And the, that place that they, they took them 20 or 10 years to build was in ruins in that moment. There's such a way that everything blew in and nothing that would have stayed there would have survived. Why? Because of spiritual rest. And that is found in God. Listening to the things of God. He would deliver you and He would give you peace so you have nothing to be worried about. People of God, we have to grow spiritually. We have to be, ham we have to be anchored with God by reading His Word, by praying, by coming to Him. Presenting things to him according to Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, and his peace will overshadow you in Jesus' mighty name.